Well, hello everyone. We're going to go ahead and create a static website on Amazon S3 today. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll link to this down, uh, this page down below. So check down below uh, for the links that are needed. So uh, we are also going to be using Amazon Web Services Academy Sandbox to do this. So it's going to go away when we're done, um, but that's okay. Uh, this same thing will work for AWS Educate or Amazon Web Services in general, just the free tier uh, or the or the full. Okay. So this is hosting a static website in Amazon S3, and this is a really um, easy thing to do. So to try and make sure that uh, I. I do this, well, I'm gonna do a lot of this from memory, but you can click on this PDF here and it'll pull up a long document on a lot of different options, okay? Uh, but we're gonna do the bare minimum. So first, let's come here to uh, the console and we're going to go to S3. And the first thing we need to do is we need to create a bucket. So think of a bucket. So first, S3 is, um, simple storage service. And a bucket is like a bucket for storage. So um, so we're gonna give this a name. And there's actually some things that you need to think about with this name, because this is basically a, a DNS name. So it needs to follow certain standards. Um, we are going to call this Uh, sample underscore website. I'll just do, I think underscores are allowed. Can't remember, oh, or is that dashes? I think it's, is it dashes? Uh, sample website. Let's see if we can create that. Um, uh, sample website. So if I was creating this for a class, I'd probably put my initials in, maybe the class. Um, so I'll just do here, JS, my initials, a sample website. Um, and then we can click, uh, select a region. Uh, by the way, we do need to pay attention to where we're at um, sometimes. So we're gonna do this in Virginia. So we'll just remember that. And right here, we want to remove block all public access, okay? Um, and acknowledge. So versioning allows you to keep track of different versions. We're gonna leave that off for now. And we're gonna disable server-side encryption for now. Now there's some advanced settings here. Uh, and we're gonna leave that disabled. We're gonna go ahead and create the bucket. So this will tell us if things, so it shows that yes, it created. So now that we've created the bucket, I'm gonna click on the bucket name and we are going to go to properties. Properties gives you some general information about the bucket. Um, and everything looks there decently for me. I like to turn on server access logs for a, a web bucket, but, uh, and static, static web hosting right here. So we're gonna edit this and we're gonna enable it. Uh, it's interesting that this looks like it's changed since the last time I've done it, but it's still very intuitive. So host a static website, uh, redirect requests for an object so you can redirect requests if you want. So we're just gonna call the index index.html and we'll leave error, error.html. And you could put some rules and stuff in here, but uh, we'll just change, the, uh, save those changes. So we have a bucket. We've told it to do web hosting. I, I think we still need to actually give it a policy, um, but let's go to, let's go ahead and create an object. 
So let me actually first. So I need to upload an index.html. So let's go ahead and create that. But to create it, let's use W3 schools. They're just awesome. So uh, Google W3 schools responsive will take you to this page. I will try and remember to include this in the links down below. Um, and I'm just, you go to try it now and you can edit things. So this is uh, the HTML page that I have. I'll copy it. Uh, I'm running Linux. So I have my text editor, save. I'm gonna call this index.html just in my home folder. And I have one, but I'll overwrite it. Um, so I come back here, coming to my S3 management console. By the way, I could create this file. Uh, I, I could upload it. I could create the bucket. I can do all that programmatically. Um, so it's good to learn how to do this manually, um, but, but you should program as much as you can. Um, oh, add file, sorry. Add file, index.html, and upload. Now, I'm pretty sure that there's a couple steps I still need to do, but I wanna double check. So we're gonna try and see if this is publicly available. Um, so we're gonna click on the object and the object is going to have the object URL. So if I click on this object URL, it says access denied. Okay. So there's a couple things that it could be. So let's troubleshoot it together. First of all, this object itself uh, might not have public permissions yet. So let's go ahead and check and give it public permissions. So uh, object owner, read, read, write, everyone right here. So let's edit this. And let's change everyone to read, read. Yeah, I ex so they're trying to make it harder for you to do stupid things. Um, and I, I applaud Amazon Web Services for doing that. Too many people have, have inadvertently given out information not intending to. That's all I need to do. Awesome. Okay, so I thought I needed to create a bucket policy as well, but it looks like I didn't. I, one of the things I like about W3 Schools, look at that. It changes for me. Thank you, W3 Schools. Um, so here I have my URL. So if this was a class and I was expecting an assignment, uh, I would have them turn this in. The cool thing about Canvas, you turn in the URL, it takes a picture of it. Um, so I turn it in submit it, then I can come here and I can close this. I wanna to come to my console and I want to sign out, which gets rid of my session cookie. Um, yes, I know. And then I want to end the lab. Ending the lab stops the cost from uh, occurring. Now this only happens if you are doing, you only want to do this piece if you are doing um, the AWS Academy. So if you're doing AWS Educate, there's not a lab unless you're doing a classroom. Um, it, it, and it just stays around forever. Um, well, while you're a student and you go through things. So that's really cool. Uh, this is a specific lab. It's going to go away the moment I, I end this lab. Um, but I'm going to do something first to show you. So I'm not going to end it yet. I've logged out of here. Let's do this. Let's go to history and uh, doo -doo, where, where's the one I closed? Let me pull it back up. Okay, so if we go here to history, it is this one, I just, because I left the title. So you can see it's still around even though I've logged out, okay? Um, 
So this is my JS Assemble website, S3 Amazon AWS.com. So it actually has a decent name. I'm I'm surprised. It must be because of how it's running. I can close that one. So uh, what I wanted to show you though is the moment I end this lab. So end lab. Are you sure you want to end this lab? Yes. It's going to go through and it's going to start removing things. So if I come back to this window that I have and I refresh it, eventually it's going to go away. So you see, you know, you may close this box now. Lab resources are terminating. So let's refresh it again. It's still around. I wonder if I can get to the root level. So access denied at the root index.html. I wonder if I open up an incognito, I'm wondering if it's just cached. Nope, so it's going to go away once this finishes terminating. So it's going in there, grabbing the environment and, and terminating it. I'm gonna close this one. But just like in creating environment, it takes a little while to, to shut it down, okay? So that's where I'm saying, uh, if you are using AWS uh, Academy and you're using the labs, so this is only specific to AWS Academy in the labs. If you're using AWS Academy in the labs um, and you run into a problem and you wanna restart it, just know, stop it, go take a break, do something, then come back and you have to start the lab, go take a break and do something, come back and, and you can do it. Because it takes a few minutes for both. Um, it's still there. So I'm not gonna wait till it's finished. So, but uh, I've terminated this lab and that's all I have for today.